Hello, everyone, and welcome to our latest ALTA Insights webinar. I'm Jeremy Yoey, Alta's Vice President of Communications, and today we've got a, a great uh, presentation lined up to, uh, to discuss uh, how to go about selecting a vendor, a uh, remote online notarization vendor, and uh, what it takes to get uh, MISMO certified if you're a provider uh, of this, and, uh, and help you uh, develop a plan to you know, interview, implement, and, and start offering digital closings in your operation. Um, before starting, I do need to touch on a few housekeeping items. Uh, the webinar is being recorded, so if you miss any of it or if you think others you know, in your office would benefit from listening, you'll get a link to the recording tomorrow. Uh, and you can always access all of ALTA's webinar recordings at alta.org forward slash webinars. That's uh, alta.org forward slash webinars. Um, you all in the link, in the email, you also get a link to uh, download a copy of today's presentation. If at any time you do have a question, uh, submit them in the questions box. We'll hold a little bit, little bit of time uh, for Q&A at the end of the presentation. Uh, do need to, to thank uh, Dell Technologies for sponsoring uh, today's Alta Insights presentation. Um, we typically have a, a short commercial, but a little you know tech, technical glitch. We couldn't get the, uh, the recording uploaded. So um, no commercial from Dell, but they're fantastic. So um, thank you, Dell. <laughs> uh, let me introduce today's speakers and we'll get into the, the meat of the conversation. Um, join us today, we have Jonathan Kearns. Uh, Jonathan is Vice President of Technology for the, the Mortgage Industry Standards Maintenance Organization, otherwise known as MISMO. Uh, jo Jonathan has a, a great deal of experience developing technology and product strategy, um, including over a decade of experience uh, with electronic signatures e-vaults and the e-closing process. Uh, before joining MISMO, he was SVP of technology at Doc Magic. Also join us, we have Kyle Tyler. Uh, Tyler leads the uh, e-closings team uh, for Virginia-based Champion Title and Settlements. Um, Kyle was instrumental in getting Champion Title set up to offer digital closings uh, back in 2018, uh, which helped uh, position the company uh, to continue operating, you know, during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. And with that, uh, Jonathan, I'll turn the conversation over to you and we can uh, dig into the MISMO uh, RON certification. Perfect. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, excited to have you all today. Thought we'd start a little bit before we get into the MISMO RON certification program and how that works to actually describe what is MISMO, right? I'm not sure if everybody's familiar with MISMO. But as Jeremy said, it is the standards body for the mortgage industry. So that's what we do is we create standards that support, and really the real estate finance industry is probably a better way to put it, through collaboration. One of the things that people think about, and, and so a little known fact is there is not a single mortgage that is done out in the U.S. without utilizing the MISMO standards. So all of the U's, UM, UMDP, ULDD, URLA, UCD, those are all based on MISMO standards. But it's all of you who actually create the standards. So it's completely volunteer driven. That's how the standards get created inside MISMO. So there's a, a, only six of us who are full-time employees and we really we, we build the manufacturing facility for you all, and you all actually produce the standards. And anyone can participate. So that's the great thing about a standards body, you know, in a, in a, uh, as an example, and we are a wholly owned subsidiary of the Mortgage Bankers Association, but we don't do policy and advocacy. So people who can or ent entities that can't be MBA members can be MISMO members. So anyone, can join MISMO and participate. Um, MISMO has developed a common language. That's what we're most noted for is our common la uh, uh, language for exchanging information. As we talked about, um, all of the U's are built utilizing the MISMO data model. So there's over 4,000 different data elements that are defined inside MISMO. And this helps us understand, like instead of one person calling it borrower address, somebody else calling it property address, somebody else just calling it address. Everybody uses the same common language for discussing and trading data. 
Um, but it's not just about data standards, as we'll talk about in the run. Um, standards can be anything. They can be best practices, checklists, forms, implementation guides, all of that stuff. It's anything that needs to be standardized. These are, even processes can come in, and that's where MISMO comes in. Language. Um, I'm sure you've all seen the new, over the last couple of years, there was a new uh, consent form for taxpayer um, utilizing the taxpayer, uh, the, the tax transcripts. That was something that got signed into law in 2019. And so we had to, so the industry came to, together through MISMO and created a common set, common language for the disclosures. Um, so that's what we do. We also have what are called communities of practice where um, industry segments, and one of them is title and closing, where we just talk about industry solutions or industry challenges and how can we solve them. Sometimes it's inside MISMO, a lot of times it's not. It's just a good place to come in and collaborate. So if you want any more information about MISMO, uh, the website is down there at the bottom of MISMO.org. So let's talk about the MISMO RON standards. As we talked about, it's not data at all. It's a set of best practices for RON technology platforms. Things like credential analysis, knowledge-based authentication, the AV quality, storage of notarial records, post-execution records, and security considerations. Uh, it started in 2016 and was officially released in 2019. And you know, Alta and MBA came up with the, the standard templates for the legislation, for RON legislation in, for the states. And that, that framework is based around the MISMO RON standards. So, you know, we had secretaries of states involved. We had obviously the GSEs, all the RON providers at that time, at least. But we've gone through, so that's what the MISMO RON standards are. It's really just a set of best practices on what RON platforms, RON technology platforms should do. Um, but through the pandemic, uh, this industry has matured a great deal. So there's another work group currently going on there's probably 70, 80 people on those meetings um, that to update these standards. So they're looking at things like KVA, audio, video, um, storage requirements, right? Because there are, you know, the GSEs have come out for lenders, at least that's for specific requirements of storing that, that video. Uh, and so they're reviewing those standards to update it. And that's what we need to do as a standards body. We need to continuously update them because our industry changes and it changes rapidly, especially through um, the pandemic. So we have this, mis so we have the standard, right? And, and you know, everybody was saying there's all these wrong platforms out there that said, well, hey, I, I comply or we're MISMO compliant or we comply with the MISMO RON certification or MISMO RON standards. But there was no real way to tell unless you as a settlement company, as a settlement agent, as a lender, um, that you wanted, you would have to do your own due diligence on that to see if they did in, indeed um, meet the criteria of the MISMO RON standards. So when I came in, I came in in 2019 and I, I was an e-closed vendor. I, again, I was at Doc Magic, and we were integrated with the RON platform. And I'm like, but why don't we offer this as a service? So that way we can provide clarity and transparency on which RON providers do comply with the MISMO RON standards, which thus now also helps um, in the approval process through the states and um, title underwriters. As an example, um, the both both um, Stewart and First American now require a technology platform to be MISMO certified before they will approve them uh, now. So what it helps with those, reducing uh, and eliminating the need for a duplicative assessment. Again, both of those use it. They do still a little bit of their own, but instead it's just a, instead of, uh, it taking you know an hour, two hours a day. They literally have two or three things they want to check. They've got some specific things each one wants to check. So it's not a it's not a complete replacement because we're based off of the specific wrong standards that MISMO creates. But it it does 90% of what is needed for all of these entities now, um, including the Secretary of State. A lot of them require it as well. Um, so really trying to help that and provide clarity and transparency throughout the industry. Right now, 
we actually have so this is 19 platform certified and, and uh, we didn't change it because that's uh, that's going to be a poll question um, but there are actually three more got certified since we finished this one so there are now 22 certified platforms and one uh, that is or I'm sorry two more that are in progress who knew there were that many platforms out there right but there's actually even more than that, I think um, the Pennsylvania Notary Association of Notaries tracks about 50, over 50 different RON platforms. So there are 22 RON platforms currently uh, certified, but for the purposes of today, 19. <laughs> uh, more progress. If you're interested on what that require, what the requirements and what the standards are, it's under MISMO.org and uh, under Education and Certification there there is a place for e-mortgage technology certifications. This one's about Ron. We also have an e-closing certification that we, we launched late last year. So there's both of those. And we talked about it's required by the top title underwriters, uh, First American and Stewart there. A little bit about the certification itself and how do we do it? Um, it again, I think I said this earlier, it's purely based off of the MISMO Ron standards. Right, so we don't go deviate outside of that. Does not verify any of the state-specific requirements. We will, we have um, grown it, matured it to where we'll ask certain questions now, but, and provide it back to um, people who rely on it, entities who rely on it, but it, may, it won't affect the certification. As long as you meet the MISMO RON standards, which are well-documented and created by the entire industry, we will certify them. Uh, so it doesn't go through any state specific requirements it is reviewed annually so it's not just a one and done we review it annually and contractually we require them to report to us if they make any major changes to their system um, and all this information about that is at mismo on mismo.org um, th but before we go to the poll question one thing i did want to mention here while we review it annually it's not just a a cursory review Right? We have them fill out a questionnaire and attestation about certain information. And we also do a demo, right? And, and our demo is about a two and a half hour process of going through, and not only the happy path, but also exception processes. I'll give you one example of it being, is that um, termination, right? So we ensure that there are, that there, it is clearly documented and able to terminate the process of uh of the of, of the session if something is going wrong so you know that's just one aspect so we have we have over two dozen different scripts that we test for in that and we do that annually um, so we really do i think a very thorough job of ensuring they do meet the mismo wrong standards all right with that i think we're ready for the poll question yeah, Jonathan, uh, I already got it launched. Uh, just a reminder for everyone on the on, on the presentation, we are offering CECLE. So if you do need that, you know, uh, participate in the poll question. Show show us that you're you're listening, and then we'll provide a link at the end of the webinar to provide your your name, email address, and then the the type of credit you you need, as well as your license or bar number. Um, so if you need that, uh, answer the quick poll question. Looks like everyone was listening, Jonathan. 87% got 19. Well, that was the old number, as you just stated. Um, so we'll, we'll wrap this up. A quick question from Christine that came in, Jonathan, and I, I'm pretty sure they are, but she asked if the certified platforms are listed on the MISMO website. It is, it is. If you go to um, both from the education and center there, also under standards there's a uh, on the link standards there's digital mortgage resource center and the certified platforms are there there's a complete list of them there yeah i should put that link in there it's a great question uh okay i thought i thought i had the slide i was like whoa maybe we took it out but the poll question threw me off so i started going down this path let me dive into a little bit more of this so the mismo ron certification process again very thorough right we and we do use we do use a outside third party firm to do this for us so, um, because we want it to be independent as well. So they fill out a questionnaire at the station. We talk about how, what states we do. Again, we do take in all of the information of, of what states they comply with and what states they feel they don't comply with. 
we do that, that live demonstration of test cases. Like I said, it's about a two and a half hour process. Happy paths, uh, exception processes. And then we have them submit supporting documentation and evidence. So as an example, a lot of the things we need to check are procedural. Do you have your procedures documented? Because as an example, I use that example of termination. A lot of them have a button for termination. A lot of them just have procedures say, hey, if this happens, if the video cuts out, try this, try this, try this. And then um, if it doesn't, close your browser and end the session. Like, that's okay. The MISMO, the MISMO standards say you must have a documented procedure in order to terminate the session, what to do if something goes wrong and how to terminate the session. There's nothing in the standards that say you need to have a button that does it. So those are the type of things we, we look for. The submission of the supporting documentation evidence, so we talked about that, but also we get copies of the notary uh, journal uh, of, from, from the RON platform. We get a copy of the digitally signed package. We check that tamper evidence seal. We check the, cert the certificate that they're utilizing. All of that information is held in our evidence package. And then we do a thorough an analysis and review of, of it. So inside the audit firm, they have one person who does all of this information and documents it. They have one level of review. And then us as MISMO staff do the final review of it as well. So again, it's a very thorough process of what we go through in order to um, certify these platforms. In fact, I would say over 90% of them have had remediation steps on their initial review. Just you know, a lot of it's not a big deal, but some, you know, a lot of times documentation, right? People don't like to do documentation. So a lot of times the things needed aren't documented. So that, that happens. Um, the Digital Mortgage Resource Center I mentioned, that's where it's at, right? So it's got, we're, we're starting to update it. If you don't go to our website until next week sometime, we're just about to launch a new website, but currently, um, it'll show you all the RON providers, the states that have enacted RON legislation and states that have executive orders or emergency legislation. Most of those are gone now, but some are still out there. Um, future state, we're going to have all things digital mortgage, a uh, bunch of dynamic information and starting with how all the closing statistics and information, where helpful links out to MBA's website, Alta's website. So that way it's a centralized place for all the information that you're looking for. and There'll be one more thing off of the Digital Mortgage Resource Center that we'll talk about in just a minute. All right, second poll question here. For any of those out there needing CECLE, is your company listed in the Alta Registry as a RON provider? If not, don't worry. We'll talk about it here at the end of the end of the presentation. And uh, you know, if you're interested, hope you go there and create your free listing and you know, indicate that you can provide you know digital closings. And uh... all right, we'll go ahead and close it. We've got about two thirds of the people on the call that have voted. So, 77% actually said no. So um, glad you're on the on the presentation. Okay. Well, th this is going to be an important piece moving forward. So you 77% who said no, better get uh, and with Alta and get that updated. Why? Because one of the things, new things that was coming next month off of the Digital Mortgage Resource Center is the, is the MISMO e-eligibility exchange powered by SnapDocs. What is the e-eligibility exchange? It's a central repository of criteria that impacts digital closings. So the easiest way to say this, how E can your mortgage be, your digital closing be? So we're gonna track things like today, all of this information's out there already, right? It's just not consolidated in a single place. So some people have E recording data, some people have RON data, some people have their counterparties, but it's not centralized in a single spot that you can do it at a transactional level. So we're now offering this. Um, again, it's gonna go live next month that can provide your transactional level details. So you can provide your county and state and then your, your counterparties, um, investor, uh, custodian, warehouse provider, servicer, subservicer, 
all this matters to the lender because in the ecosystem they all have to be you know they all it's the least common denominator is the best way to say it. if one doesn't do e-notes then you're probably not going to do an e-note on that loan um, and another aspect in there is is settlement agent readiness are you ready are you enabled for for being able to do digital closings hybrid fully closings ron ipen we are getting all of that information on you all the settlement agents in the branches from the alter registry so we just uh, finalized the partnership so all of that information from settlement agent data will be provided to the MISMO e-eligibility exchange from the ALTA registry. So if you don't have your information up there and a lender comes in and says, hey, you know, does, I'm working with uh, ABC title and escrow, you haven't updated the ALTA registry, we're gonna come back and tell them no information provided by this, user, this, uh, this entity. So we don't want that to happen. We want this to be a utility for the entire industry. If any of you are technology providers out there, you while we are going to offer this in a user interface, as you kind of see the little thing on here, it's also um, it's also available via API integration, so you can integrate it right into your platform, whether it's a title production software platform, whether it's a ROM platform, whether it's an e-closing, um, LOS, whatever. You can implement it right in there. Great thing is this is free of charge to all um, members. So that's great. So we're not trying to snap docs is a great partner in this, not only helping us develop it, but also uh, financially in supporting this endeavor solely. So it's been, it's been great. Um, so you 77%, go get your information updated in the Alta Red Alta registry. We need it. Uh, the industry needs it. They need to know that you're doing wrongs that, or if you're not doing wrongs, that's okay too. They just need to know. We don't want no information provided. So. With that, I will hand it over to uh, Kyle. Thank you, Jonathan. I can't tell you how valuable that is. You know, starting e closings about five years ago, it was it was kind of wild, wild west. It was very hard to navigate the space. So I it, that that's a huge um, huge deal, and I, I echo your your, um, you know, your 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 points of making sure everybody uh, signs up. I'm going to make sure that our company is signed up. Um, Thanks for uh, allowing me to talk about this this um, this topic. It's it's something I I truly enjoy. Um, I do e closings all day long. By trade, I'm just a settlement agent, um, and I point that out because I'm not any more qualified than any of you are to start implementing an e closing. Uh, I don't have a background in computers, and and really, I promise you don't you don't need to have one either. What I do have is, of course, some experience. Again, for the past five, going on six years, we've been doing e-closings. Those e-closings consist of you know, seller sides, equities, refinances with, um, with papering out the note. So everything is e-signed except for the note. Um, and, and over those years, it's been my job to, to um, figure out what platform would be best suited for our company. Um, and I'm continuously uh, demoing them as they pop up, as they get MISMO approved. I want to know what's out there now, what's new. Um, as you start down the demo process, ask yourself, you know, does, does it feel like this, this platform is invested in you know, their time and, and resources into ensuring that the signer has the best possible experience uh, and or are they dedicated to improving on that process? Um, during, during the demos, once you start, you know, scheduling some demos, you know, pick out, you know, three, five um, from that list on MISMO, you'll want to see what the entire process looks like for the signer, from how they receive the invitation for the e-closing to how their KBAs are, are handled or their ID validation to how they're applying their signatures. You're going to want to know all those steps. Since this is technology that we're dealing with, and it, it really is all about the technology, uh, you will inevitably have to walk through those signers and kind of hold their hand um, to get them connected. Because again, it's it's new, um, and there'll be you'll, there'll be some needed patience uh, with with some signers. But I'll tell you, it's it's 
once you get them on and, and they e-sign, they're going to be thrilled and they'll, they'll never want to do a closing it another way. Um, you'll also want to understand your process as the title company um, or settlement agent that is uploading, that are tagging the documents. You know, how, how easy is that for you? Is that a good flow uh, to add the tags for the signer? Uh, switch between signer one, signer two, or add the notary tags. Um, you know, efficiency is key, uh, especially with, you know, sometimes in our industry, we get last minute things. Um, so we, it really is important to have that, that efficiency on that end. Um, one huge aspect that I've found has, has really saved us some, some closings um, and most of the platforms you can, well, all of them you'll be able to do from a computer or a desktop with a camera and microphone. There's a difference maker, in, in my opinion, if I'm looking at a couple platforms and one of them offers a solution to do it from your phone or a tablet, I would always choose that one. Um, but that ability, because we are working with technology, that ability for when your signers might have some technical issues on their computer. Maybe the camera's not working or the, the uh, microphone's not working, some type of security setting. To be able to pivot to a, a phone and tablet has, has truly saved us some, some transactions that, that would have not have closed. Say about, in our, in our experience, about 20% of our e-closings are done from a tablet or, a, or an iPhone. Now, along with understanding the platform, you also want to understand the, what kind of training is offered, you know, what kind of tech support is, is available. Um, will there be a point of contact for you to call when, you know, things might go a little haywire um, and you need a quick resolution or, or, you know, you need a quick contact to say, listen, here's my situation. How do, how, how do I manage this? How do I get this person signed? Uh, and connected with you. So having that relationship with that platform to be able to 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 reach out to to figure that out. Um, for us, we've been fortunate because we have we have that in place with our platform. Um, but it, it it really has has saved a lot of headache on our end. Final thing, and I put this intentionally last, is the cost of of the platform. Um, you do have to consider the cost, but I also believe it's not as important as you might think. Um, I'm way more comfortable choosing a platform that might be a little bit more expensive if their technology is, is, is superior. I value that technology over the price um, across the board. And like I mentioned, it, it's all about the technology. Um, several different models you'll, you'll see uh, as far as pricing goes. You know, there'll be some, and it could be a combination of those three, um, but there'll be monthly charge. There could be a, a per e-notary or user charge and a per transaction charge. What I like to do when I'm demoing is, is ask, uh, ask the platform for, here's a scenario, how much would it charge? Um, I have a seller, two different sellers, two different locations. Uh, what is that, uh, that charge on this platform going to be? Uh, and I would just I would you know, ask the same thing on, across all the platforms that you're you're looking at, just so you can have an apples to apples uh, comparison. Now, along with cost, and, and one thing I, I do want to mention that it might not play as big of a factor as you might think is, um, or do you plan on passing on any of those costs to you know, for instance, your sellers? Um, Champion Title doesn't do that. They they view it as a value add for using Champion that we offer that solution. Um, but there are some other title companies that I work with that do pass on that fee to the seller. And, and I'll tell you, I've never gotten any pushback. I've not heard of any um, pushback from any of the sellers because they are one happy to pay uh, you know a, a standard notary fee. Granted, it's it's uh, an e-notary fee, uh, but that's really what it is, but to have that convenience uh, and, and ease and efficiency of that closing, uh, they're, they're happy to pay for it. So, it, it, you know, you'll obviously want to understand how you'll roll that out. Well, you guys, you know, t 
take on the cost yourself or pass anything on might might help with with some of your decisions all right now to just some some general questions that might come up as you're demoing these of course we want to make sure they're MISMO certified like uh, Jonathan said that is the industry standard and thank God they are um, the platform they'll all pretty much uh, create an electronic seal for you I think very few don't, but that, that's typically standard in their uh, onboarding process. You, of course, we'll need to obtain, a, 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 I'm, oh my gosh, now I'm blanking, um, a digital certificate, sorry. Um, you will have to obtain a digital certificate that's typically done through IdentTrust. Most of the platforms will have you have some resources on you know, who to contact in the process to do that. Um, but that, again, all will be done through that onboarding process. Uh, another aspect of the closing is when real estate agents are involved, they always want to be included. So uh, I don't, we, we do want to we, we ask the platforms who all can be included in, in the closing. I've never had a loan officer asked to be included. Attorneys sometimes, real estate agents, if they're not asked, they're going to be upset even if they don't show up. So you'll want to understand uh, how do you add those additional parties to the transaction. Another thing I like to understand also, and it's, it's something that I, I review monthly on our, our current closings, is the average closing time for that signer from the time they connect to the time that they're done. Um, to me, this, this shows how efficient the e-closings are. Uh, and I, I would assume all of those platforms would have some type of average e-closing transaction data that you can compare. Uh, it, to, to me, it really does illuminate how efficient or inefficient that that, that, that platform might be. Um, another question as you're, you're talking to them is feel them out, see what type of uh, improvements they're currently working on. Not only will this uh, kind of gauge if they're committed to you know, improving the platform, but it also will show you what their deficiency are, deficiencies are. So for instance, if they're saying, well, we're, we're working on a process where signers from different locations can connect at the same time, then you'll understand, well, right now that's not a possibility. So how do we, how do we navigate two signers, two different locations for this e-closing? So it might just help prompt some, some questions for you to kind of work through with them. Um, another big thing as we look long term is the integration that platforms have with lenders. And I'm sure most of you all have some, you know, valued lenders that you work with on a regular. Some might be, you know, going down the pathway to Ron. Um, most of them start with a hybrid, then a hybrid plus eNote, and then a Ron solution. So if you have any of these lenders that are kind of in that, in that, um, you know, workflow, I would definitely start working, uh, having conversations with them to understand what platforms they're using for that. Because we've seen a lot of these doctor providers having and rolling out their own RON platforms. So if you, if you wanna kind of earn that uh, business from the lender, it might be a good look at uh, whatever, whatever document provider that they're using. Um, and then of course, in conjunction with, with your all settlement, you know, how do you, how do you work together to bring her on ultimately is the goal uh, to their customers. And then I, the last thing, again, I, I touched on earlier, it, it, it's something that you can, you can factor in while you're, you're evaluating these platforms is, is how you can kind of offset some of the charges. I will mention very last uh, before kind of I, I wrap up, um, you know, each platform has its nuances that you really won't understand and know until you're actually in it. Um, but I promise you, which, whichever platform you do choose, I, I swear your, your customers are gonna be thrilled to be able to do e-closings from wherever they are. So it is doable. I've, we've switched a um, couple different platforms through the years. Um, looking back at you know my first couple of platforms, I can't believe that we were doing e-closings on them. Um, and, and we've come a long way, but even back then, people were thrilled, even if there are some glitches and, and technical issues back then. Um, and, and really, ultimately, looking to implement e-closings, 
It's just a commitment to add to the level of customer service you can provide. Uh, all right, Jonathan, uh, you want to uh, go to the next slide here real quick? I think that's the registry slide, and uh, I'll touch a little bit on, on on what the altered registry is about, especially since we had you know, three-fourths who aren't, aren't included. Um, real quick, though, Tyler, uh, great insight information on, on everything you guys, you know, went through, the thought process and the questions everyone, you know, on, on the webinar should be thinking about. Um, real quick for the registry, the full name, National ALTA Title and Settlement Agent Registry, um, kind of a mouthful, so Ultra Registry for short. <laughs> Searchable uh, online database of underwriter uh, confirmed title agent companies, uh, real estate attorneys, and underwriter direct offices. Um, has a, It's kind of a one and done solution for, for various things, one for underwriter oversight. Um, one cool thing it provides is the uh, uh, simplifies the process to get E and O information to your underwriters. But you know, specific to to this conversation and this webinar is that the registry can showcase uh, your company's ability to offer remote online notarizations, um, which, as Jonathan mentioned, you know, directly ties into the E eligibility um, endeavor that Alta is now participating with Mismo to you know showcase you know the level of, of a transaction can be completed digitally. Um, so you know, while digital closings are still a small part of the overall you know, origination volume, you know, we're, we're just seeing, seeing the growth as, as more, more stakeholders involved in the transaction everywhere from the lenders, settlement agents to the secondary market are just embracing this to one, you know, speed up the process and, and reduce cost and you know, hopefully at the end of the day, you know, deliver a better closing experience for 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 the consumer. Um, now, might not be you know, used for all transactions. You know, Kyle, that's kind of one question I had for you guys. You know, how, when you guys implemented it, you know, you probably didn't you know full spigot and go for everything you're doing. You know, you know, probably your advice is to pick a bucket of of, of transactions and and get experience in in, in doing those. Yeah, I think I think what we initially started with seller sides in a certain county in our in our state, and then you know got the process, got comfortable, and then and then you know expanded from there. Yeah. So uh, real quick, Alta Registry, Alta.org forward slash registry. You know, encourage you to go there, get your listing. It is free, and uh, you know that and then that will only enhance the uh, Alta's partnership with the eligibility exchange. Um, with that, you know, again, we'll, we'll hold a little bit of time for Q&A. Jonathan did in the post in the chat box a link to the certified providers. Um, I will also post the link for anyone who needs CECLE. So in, input your data, and we'll get the rest taken care of. Taken care of for you. Um, a couple of questions have have came in. Uh, a real quick, uh, don't put your information in the chat box. Post it in the link. <laughs> a couple of questions, Jonathan. Um, for the certification, are the certified platforms reporting their stats as to percentage of actual terminations? In other words, does Mismo evaluate and report performance of the platforms as part of its annual review? So, so we don't collect statistics on what they're doing and not um, on that aspect. We simply certify based off of the standards, the the best practices that are written. Okay. Um, another question now, you know, when the pandemic hit, and you know, basically it was a deluge of companies reaching out to the providers, and you know, the providers <laughs> couldn't couldn't help out companies fast enough to to get set up for digital closings. Um, you know, what resources? Are provided to help help title settlement companies um, that that provide these services. One, you know, go to Mismo's site. You can also go to the Alta Marketplace. There, under under the marketplace, you can search for companies that offer digital closing solutions. So, Jonathan, I'm, I'm guessing you know you could go to the the link you have there for the certified providers and start doing your due diligence, set up calls, and you know start interviewing them. 
Yeah, that's a great point. And if you're looking for more information on digital closings in general, on how to get started or certain questions about what's going on, you know, MBA, MISMO, and Alta put on, we've done three now um, digital mortgage boot camps. And I do believe the last one in January we recorded and should be available on both MBA's and Alta's website, if I remember correctly. Um, I think there's a small charge for it, but it comes with a oh, well over 100 page playbook of chock full of information on you know things you need to think about, um, uh, even processes that you need to do, operational efficiencies. How how do you how do you change this? Um, all the different uh, different um, pit, pitfalls or or learn lessons learned. Kyle talks about right because you know the, uh, the people who've been doing it for a while. Um, they've worked out the kinks for sure and it takes a little while it's a it's a it's a business process change the technology is the easy part right it's a business process change so you have to embrace change it's even in there talking about some of the things of how they uh how uh, other settlement agents and lenders uh, embrace that change and the, the, the thing i would say is is if you are if you are one of the biggest questions, so here's the funniest thing I think in the entire industry, right? I came from the lender side, so until I came to Mismo and was at the settlement side, the biggest thing when you get what's your inhibitor to doing RON closings is if you ask the settlement agents, the settlement agents say, my lenders don't wanna do it. If you ask lenders the exact same question, their biggest answer is my settlement agents don't wanna do it, right? So, so you know, if you had had the conversation one time with that company um, two years ago, don't think they haven't switched. If Even if you go look at the MERS e-note registry, um, the number of originators doing e-notes jumped almost doubled last year, right? There's over 130 different originators that have done e-notes that not even know the, the hybrids. Um, so that's an interesting perspective. The other one we thought, and again, this is the best data we have as far as digital closings and such, is the e-note, right? We can tell our volume percentage-wise how, how many loans are registered on the MERS system versus how many are e-notes. And that went up significantly year over year. So last year in March of last year, we were at about 4%. And this year, we're at 7%. No, okay, 7%, but that's a big double, especially when we thought Right, the industry was thinking, well, refi, the refi market drives a little bit of that percentage because of you, you know, as a lender, you're more in control of your of your uh, relationship with your title. So in a purchase market, right, it's the real estate agent choosing, so it's different. But we're in a purchase market, and the volume drastically down in registration. So volume is way down, and the percentage of e uh, e notes is staying fairly close to what it was. So that's really good actually. Percentage wise has gone up significantly, but the number, the amount being registered, which was surprising to me at least, um, and, and uh, pleasantly surprised. Got a lot, uh, several more questions coming in. Um, one question asks the, the top three platforms. I don't, I don't know, you know, we don't, definitely don't want to, you know, promote one over the other. Yeah, I think it's all gonna, uh, come down to as you interview you know several companies what's the right fit you know what works for your culture what what works with the technology that you have now you know any, any other suggestions you know jonathan kyle well that person has the question i'll offer to that person or, or anybody else um if, if you want to reach out to me we can have a you know off offline conversation on on some of that, um, I don't mind from this from January's uh, you know Alta convention. Um, a lot of title companies were in the beginning processes and and reached out to me. I kind of helped guide them, kind of give you my a uh, little bit more in depth perspective. I have no problem doing that as well. Yeah, and yeah. I think you hit it on the head, Jeremy. Is is that what what fits with your technology and your operational procedures? There's not a there's not a one size fits all. And, and Kyle, your your company is pretty interesting. You know, you, you, a lot of title companies, you know, use you guys as the digital closing solution. So, you know, a lot of companies don't want to go through this process. 
And you know, this that is an option. Find a title, title company that you, you like working with that does offer the digital closings and you know, develop a relationship with them. Correct. Yeah, we, we, we found a need that, you know, if there's some title companies that don't want to put that time and, and expense and, and effort of learning, implementing a pro process that they manage, um, we've created a, a company called American E Closings where we'll just, in essence, we're a glorified notary and, and we'll conduct the e closing. They can offer it to their, to their customers and it's a win win situation. Yeah. Um, clever well, name, Kyle. Thank you, sir. Um, Kyle, I how long do you know, the e-closings for you guys take you know, as compared to maybe a traditional closing? So like I've mentioned before, that's one of the key uh, numbers I like to see in my reports every month. So we're averaging out about 14 minutes for an e-closing. Um, you know, once it starts getting out of whack is, is when we kind of need to kind of re-evolve and re take a look at things. But yeah, on average, it's 14 minutes of, of e-closing time for that signer. You know, obviously there's there's other time invested, you know, prepping the documents, sending the docs, sending the e-closing transaction out. Um, but what I'm important is is the customer, how how much time are they invested in, in the e-closing? Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you just out of happenstance. So I'm closing on uh, uh, selling my house, like it's closing tomorrow. And so I did, uh, the Ron transaction, a Ron transaction yesterday, yesterday afternoon. And my wife is not a uh, uh, wonderful lady, not tech, uh, not very technically uh, adverse, right? And so she she was a little bit nervous, especially because we all we each had to have our own computer. Uh, it, it was, I think, 10 minutes tops. Mind you, we're the seller, so it's, it, you know, it's not all the documents that need to go on. But she literally came over to me and she goes, wait, that's it? We're done? <laughs> You know, like, like, so it was like, it was, oh, it was, she was flabbergasted of that. It was that easy and that, that, um, quick, you know, she did miss one of the KBAs. I did not. Like, <laughs> <laughs> not that you mentioned that to her or brought that up, right? Yeah. I got five out of five. She got four out of five. <laughs> but uh, it, it, was, it was cool. I've used raw technologies for other things. I've need, had to be notarized, but I've never got to utilize it in a, 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 uh, a real estate transaction yet. So that was awesome. Hmm. Awesome. Uh, just a reminder, uh, Jessica asked if uh, where they go to find the certified platforms. Jonathan posted the link in the, in the chat box. Well, I think mine only goes to presenters and panelists. Can you copy? I, I don't have the option to do to everyone. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. Let's do this. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, I, I just noticed that when I saw your say all entire. and I don't have that option. Okay. There we go. You can see the list of in progress and certified for both e-closing and RON. Okay. And uh, Patricia, you asked about uh, New Jersey, if they have RON. I forget when, but yes, uh, New Jersey passed a RON bill. Um, just put a link in, in the chat box as well. You can view all the states that have uh, RON legislation on the books. There's also links to the specific you know, legislation in, in each state and, and what each state requires. Um, let's see here, get a few more questions and we'll wrap up for the day. Regarding that state uh, specific uh, information, it, it also is a good um, thing to have if the platform is up to date with that as well. Um, it, it kind of keep if you're if you're doing closings in in many states, nice to have that um, the confirmation from from the platform too. Yeah. Uh, Kyle's questions for you, and it, and it might vary by state, but you know, in your experience, uh, is it the lender or the consumer that's choosing this solution? In in a refinance. Uh, situation it's typically the lender because they are um, kind of driving that transaction they have more control in that in that transaction um, seller sides um, of course the, the, the title company we're driving we're offering that solution but there's we have a couple lender partners that they don't want any part of uh, offering the closings so they rely on on the title company to offer that in those those instances there it's everything except for the note 
the note we email to the borrower, they print it off, sign it, and FedEx it back. And that's that's kind of a placeholder until they start getting their e-note uh, in place. Okay. And then you know, kind of one one last question, you know, operational wise, um, well, coverage wise, actually, um, Gail asked about E&O insurance, and what Kyle, if you know, familiar, does typical E&O insurance cover RON closings? It, it is. A so on the platform I use, we we have to we have to use, we have to upload our E&O you know, proof of E&O insurance. The requirements for the platform for for us is just your your typical notary, and and I I can't remember what it is. I had our company pay for it. Um, I can't remember what the cover the coverage. It, it, it's it's a minimal. It's whatever just a, a, a regular notary would would have to get. Fifteen thousand. Hmm. Sorry, I don't know. Okay. All right. Fair enough. But um, nothing special because it's electronic. Okay. All right. Well, I think we've we've, we've gotten through the questions. Uh, you know, Jonathan, great plug about the, the boot camp that MBA and Mismo and Alta have put, have put together. As you mentioned, lots of great content. Um, speakers well well versed on you know soup to nuts and the entire digital closing process. Um, so you know, if you're looking for additional information about you know where to start, where to go. At the, a lot of good information in in, in that handout that, that was provided um, yep, there was. during the conference. Um, Are they going to do another boot camp by chance? Yeah, we, we will. We're talking it through right now. We're trying to find a place. You know, we like to tag it on something else uh, so that way people don't have to travel for that. So we're, we're all working together right now to try to get one, you know, mid to late summer is what we're looking at. Yep. Yep. So stay tuned. Uh, we we were saying like Barbados or Cabo or something. <laughs> that way. <laughs> I don't typically go to those, so maybe I need to rethink uh, my travel. <laughs> um, so, but anyway, yeah, uh, look out for information on that. Also, we'll be rolling out more information about the e eligibility exchange. Um, it's going to be a great partnership for that. Uh, just a reminder: if you missed uh, parts of today's webinar, I think others in your office would would benefit from listening. Uh, you will get a recording to the presentation as well as a link to download a copy of the presentation uh, tomorrow. Uh, before wrapping up, do need I do need to thank Dell Technologies uh, once again for sponsoring today's webinar. And with that, that will uh, bring us to the conclusion of today's presentation. Uh, Kyle and Jonathan, thank you uh, for spending a little time for us to uh, learn about MISMO, uh, learn about the certification process, and, and, and learn about um, some things title companies should think about vetting us uh, ron vendors so, appreciate you having us all right uh, take care everyone thank you thank you thank you guys